بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين المصطفى أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاصبر صبرا جميلا إنهم يرونه بعيدا ونراه قريبا صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد According to this ayah from Surah Al-Ma'arij, verse number 5, 6 and 7, or these verses of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his prophet, Fasbir sabran jamila. Be patient, but there is a special type of patience here that is mentioned, and that is sab jamil. Literally, jamil means what? Beautiful, literally. So what does it mean to have a beautiful patience? You know, it means what? You put some, you know, makeup on or you put some perfume on. What is this? To look beautiful. But what this patience means, it appears that there are types of people with patience. There is a person who, when struck with a difficulty or a calamity, doesn't have much patience. And as he's waiting, he's also complaining. Ya Allah, why this? Why that? One day Imam al-Sajjad, salamullahi alayhi, saw somebody complaining to people about his financial situation. He's complaining. That, you know what, things are not going well, I don't have this, and Allah is not, you know, giving me much. He turned to him and he said, you are complaining to the one who does not have mercy of the one who has mercy upon you. You are complaining of the one who has mercy upon you to the one who has no mercy upon you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are complaining of him to the one who has no mercy, to a person who cannot really help you. This type of patience is the patience that is not jameel, that is not a good patience. On the contrary, sabrun jameel is the patience where a person doesn't complain to other people. Yes, a person can sometimes complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he doesn't go and complain to other people. He keeps it inside. And he always prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, for the strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, that we belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to him we shall return and this is what this ayah is also referring to that Ya Rasulullah although some people come to you and they insult you they use bad words against you they fight against you Quraysh in Mecca for example gave you a lot of trouble but and there is a justification for this. They 
they claim that the day of judgment is not going to happen. That is a lie. This is nothing that's going to be true. However, we know what is the truth. And we know the day of judgment will come when justice will be served. So have patience in these few days in dunya. And in the akhirah, justice will be served. Justice will be served. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks of the akhirah in the Quran, when he refers to the akhirah, he usually uses the past tense. إِذَا وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةِ In the past tense, as if the day of judgment has happened. وَجِيءَ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِجَهَنَّمِ إِذَا دُكَّتِ الْأَرْضُ دَكَّةِ You know, all in the past tense. And the reason the Mufassirin say is because Allah wants to tell us that the day of judgment will happen. It is not something that's going to be like there is any doubt about it. It's a reality that will come. Now, let us turn to this great lady whose wafat will coincide with tomorrow, the 15th day of Rajab. And according to the historians, they say she died the year 62 after Hijrah, which means she only stayed for about one year, just over a year, after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, sallallahu alayhi in Karbala. Let us take a look at her life and see what, how many difficulties she experienced, what she went through. And yet, let's look at her patience and her sabr. And it is lessons for us to learn from. Brothers and sisters, in life, we go through a lot of difficulties, many things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us through financial difficulties, family sometimes, family difficulties and family issues, sometimes health issues and health difficulties, sometimes emotional, different kinds. Yet if we sit down and reflect upon what Zainab alayha, went through, it really makes us feel good that you know what? No matter how much difficulty I'm experiencing, it is nothing compared to what she had to go through and she had to witness. It makes us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alami. Alhamdulillah. Ya Allah, when it is the time of difficulty, I say Alhamdulillah. When it's the time of ease, I also say Alhamdulillah. After the death of her father, Rasulullah, she witnessed what happened to the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, to her mother Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam And then her mother dies at a young age. It is said one day, Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi was sitting on the grave of Fatima sallallahu alayhi as she had requested. She told him in her will, Ya Ali, Read the Quran over my grave. So he used to go at night when there is nobody around and he would read Quran on the grave of Fatima sallallahu alayha. One day or one night, he snoozed a little. He saw Fatima al-Zahra alayha salam in the dream. She said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, go back home. Rush back. He said, what is the matter? Why? She said, Zainab has just woke up from her sleep in the middle of the night and she is not finding you. She's crying. Turn back to Zainab. Go back to her. So Amir al-Mu'mini rushes back home and indeed he finds Zainab salam crying. He says, what is the matter, my little one? She said, I woke up. I didn't find you around. I got scared. What happened to you? So he comforted her, he took care of her. But she was patient and then she was with her father, Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi. She went to Kufa with her father, Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salam, when he became the Khalifa. 
she saw the oppression that her father faced before becoming the Khalifa. And she was with her father the whole time, supporting him. When she arrived in Kufa, the women of Kufa approached Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And they said to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, is it possible that your daughter Zainab teaches us Quran? He said, yes, of course. He spoke to her, his daughter and she said, no problem. So she started holding classes in her house where the people used to come, the women of Kufa, they used to come and attend the tafsir. This tells us that there is nothing stopping women from teaching in society, from integrating with the society, from benefiting the society within the limits of the Sharia, ah, within the limits and the boundaries of the religion. One day, Amir al-Mu'mineen enters into the house as she is teaching. He hears her teaching about the alphabets in the Quran. You know, at the beginning of the surah, sometimes there are some letters. Alif, Lam, Mim, Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Saad, Taha, and so on and so forth. So there are certain alphabets. She was teaching the women about these alphabets. And the one she was talking about was in Surah Maryam. Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Saad. When she finished and the class was dismissed, Amir al-Mu'mineen approached her and he said, Ya Zainab, mashallah, very well done. But do you know this particular verse? Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Saad is revealed about you and your brother Imam Hussein alayhi salam and what will happen to you in Karbala. 